This is MPI's pneumatic line magnet, typically used for pneumatic conveying applications. This features six Desteco clamps on the separator to keep compression on the door to the magnet itself while it's in operation. Before we get into testing this, the first thing we're going to do is check the stamped serial number on here. This is going to tell us when it was manufactured as well as the serial number that ties into its factory certificate for the performance values that it had from MPI when it shipped. So we can use that as a baseline and compare the performance over time. So our goal should be to get plus or minus 5 to 10 percent of that value. We'll undo all the Desteco clamps in order to access the separator. These would typically be installed on a horizontal line or a vertical line. Uh, for demonstration purposes, we have this mounted at a 45, which makes it a little bit more difficult to clean. Uh, but the first step before testing any separator is to clean the magnetic separator. So we'll unlatch the cam system in the back and turn it at a 45 degree angle. Then we'll pull out the magnet element itself and all the tramp metal, if there were any on it, would fall into this catch pan or into a bucket on the floor. We'll then take the magnetic separator and put it back in the housing. Turn it back to 45 degrees and latch that cam system back down. While we have it open, we're also gonna take a look at the gasket to make sure that it's in good condition and doesn't need to be replaced. All MPI pneumatic line magnets use a O-ring cord gasket, which is a half inch diameter, and it seals very well. The Desteco clamps help as well, keeping operators from over compressing that gasket. It is put inside of a channel, so it can't be clamped down too hard. So to do our test, we'll test on the inner poles first. These outer poles do not have as much magnet material, so their, low, their values are going to be lower than the average that we're looking for. Uh, so we will first test on this pole. We'll attach the test piece and then zero out our scale. We'll make sure that our scale is set to max so that the peak value is red. And we'll make sure that the units are correct. I have mine set to pounds, uh, but you could also set it to ounces or kilograms as well. With the scale zeroed out, we'll do our first pull. And then we'll document that result, reattach our test piece and zero it out again. We always wanna pull at a 90 degree angle, as close to it as we can, given the separator and the way it is installed. And we always wanna pull slow and with our hand on the scale like I have shown here. We'll document this result as well and move on to the next pull. You don't want to pull the scale with the nylon strap because it can go flying and also result in less accurate test values. So we'll go ahead and redo that one. That one did show quite lower in comparison. So we'll do a much more accurate slow test and more accurate value to go along with it. We'll document that third result. And we'll close up the separator. This system is ready to go back into production.